everybody welcome to the day 10 program of virtual tour of universe today is the last quantum so we are uh, going to screen you and uh, we have with us mr satish joshi from infovision welcome satish uh, now i would request satish to screen the today's quantum so uh, today the, it will be an interesting quantum so Today is the 10th day of our plan term. So, Satish, please. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Back in the 1950s, this would have been most people's concept of a space robot. Fueled by science fiction films and Cold War worries, they had a rather poor reputation. The first man-made Earth satellite, Sputnik 1, was launched in 1957, a scientific curiosity. Today, over 4,000 of these electronic robots encircle our planet. Our lives are extremely dependent upon them, yet we rarely give them a thought. Looking nothing like the robots of science fiction, these guys, with their hardened bodies and amazing senses, have let us explore the most dangerous, distant, and fascinating places. Through their eyes and ears, we have made the most daring explorations of the most exotic objects in the world. We've even tasted and clawed the surface of far-flung planets. Using sensor systems far beyond the human, they have exposed worlds hidden beneath dense and poisonous atmospheres. And some, traveling for decades through the dangerous radiation zones of interplanetary space, have revealed to us the secrets of the most distant worlds in our solar system. Robots have boldly gone where humans don't dare to go. In the late 1970s, an exceptional lineup of the outer planets allowed the two Voyager spacecraft the opportunity to quickly reach the outer solar system. Often, it was the smaller worlds orbiting the outer giants that stole the show. Like here on Miranda, a 480 kilometer moon of Uranus. This great wall is a huge five kilometer high cliff formed when a large block of terrain was raised high above the surface and apparently frozen into place. For a tiny world, this is gigantic. Scaled to Earth size, this would be a cliff 470 kilometers high. Out here, light from the sun, three billion kilometers away, is so feeble that solar panels wouldn't work. So each Voyager had to carry a small nuclear generator to provide electricity for the probe's instruments. It's the stumpy cylinder to the right of the dish-shaped antenna. The long truss carried the magnetometer, which needed to be kept distant from the craft's electronics. A movable array of cameras and other sensors were the eyes and ears of this giant robot. 
Boosted by its encounters with the other planets, Voyager 2's flight time to Neptune was cut from 30 to a mere 12 years. Four and a half billion kilometers from the sun, it swept low over the outermost planet Neptune in August 1989 and into the record books. It had visited four planets, two for the first time, and explored 48 moons. It will be another 150 years before the planets align so helpfully again. Oddly, the two innermost planets, Mercury and Venus, have proven quite difficult to explore. Mercury was partially imaged by one spacecraft in 1974 and 1975, but it would be another 33 years before a robot explorer returned. This is Messenger. After a couple of swing bys, it entered Mercury orbit in 2011. Surprisingly, this tiny iron cored planet turns out to have a surface composition that differs quite substantially from that of Earth, Moon, or Mars. Messenger is also collecting data on unusual compounds discovered near the North Pole. Some researchers believe this could actually be water ice but there's not enough evidence yet. Ice of any kind is most unlikely to be found here on Venus, where the surface temperature is hot enough to melt lead. Only a few Soviet Venera craft, built like tanks, have managed to survive a descent and soft land on Venus. Their images enabled us to create this detailed surface picture of the volcanic rocky terrain. It lies beneath a carbon dioxide atmosphere 90 times as dense as that on Earth. Here, an unprotected human would be poisoned, fried, and squashed. A rather unpleasant welcome. Our knowledge of the planet's surface has been gained through the radar eyes of various orbiting craft, including one Magellan, built from leftover parts from the Voyager, Galileo, and Mariner 9 missions. This is a scientifically accurate recreation of its surface, dominated and constantly changed by intense volcanic activity. In size, Venus is almost the twin of the Earth, but its dense carbon dioxide atmosphere, sulfuric acid clouds, and furnace-like temperatures mean that this, our closest neighbor, will be one of the last to be visited by humans, or even robots, in the foreseeable future. The only place beyond Earth that both humans and robots have explored is the moon. However, for many born after the 1970s, the manned moon flights are distant historical events. With the recent discovery that vast deposits of water ice may be present at the moon's poles, the possibility of future exploration and even industrialization is more likely than ever before. Once the sole territory of the United States and Russia, the moon has now been successfully visited by robot craft from Europe and in the last few years, from the three Asian technology giants, Japan, India, and China. But the $30 million X Prize for the first non-government lunar robot lander is ensuring that a return to the moon will happen in the near future. The Chinese have also expressed interest in a manned landing, possibly in the next decade. The United States plans for a return to the moon have been canceled. Instead, NASA is planning a manned landing on an asteroid. The Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa captured some microscopic samples of an asteroid and returned them to Earth in 2010.
Beginning in mid-2011, the Dawn spacecraft orbited Vesta, the second largest of the asteroids found between Mars and Jupiter. Its results show that Vesta has remained virtually unchanged since its formation four billion years ago. Yet the varieties of features suggest that this tiny world has more in common with the larger planets than previously thought. Dawn is now en route to the largest asteroid, Ceres. Someday, mining asteroids could become an important source of minerals scarce on Earth. It has been estimated that the commercial value of a typical asteroid just a few kilometers across is around $80 trillion. That's enough to pay off the U.S. national debt five times over. Related to, but different from most asteroids, are comets. They are more volatile and release great amounts of gas and dust as they are warmed by the sun. The most well-known is Comet Halley, whose relatively short orbit brings it close to the sun every 76 years. So for its first return of the space age, Russia, Japan, and Europe sent robots to meet it. The most daring was the European Giotto craft. In March 1986, it got within 600 kilometers of the comet's nucleus. During this time, the 15-kilometer-wide comet was ejecting three tons of material each second from three major vents, mostly water and carbon monoxide. Giotto endured over 12,000 impacts from cometary debris until one violent impact knocked the craft off course and destroyed its camera. Since that time, a number of spacecraft have made more cautious approaches to less active comets. They have managed to collect some comet dust and even deliberately crash into a comet to release materials. The most difficult and dangerous comet mission since Giotto has been underway since 2004. In March of that year, the European Space Agency launched the Rosetta spacecraft, which will rendezvous with its cometary target in 2014. Excitingly, Rosetta carries a smaller robot explorer, Philae, which is due to actually land on the comet's nucleus in November of 2014. Explorations of asteroids and comets with their apparently ancient composition will hopefully tell us more about how the planets were formed over four billion years ago. More robots have been destroyed trying to explore Mars than any other planet. The Russians have been particularly unlucky. In 2011, their most sophisticated Mars robot got no further than Earth orbit. It had been designed to land on the surface of the Martian moon Phobos, a possible site for an early manned mission. Despite all the difficulties, there are many robotic explorers from the U.S. and Europe at work. 
In 2012, the U.S. successfully landed the largest and most sophisticated rover named Curiosity to begin a new era in Mars exploration and eventually allow the first manned Mars landings. Manned flights to the largest planet in our system, Jupiter, are unlikely for perhaps a century or more because of its dangerous radiation environment. Even robots need to be especially hardened to survive here. The Galileo spacecraft, which orbited the planet for several years, often lost data and even had electric arcing between some of its components. It's a deadly place for robots and humans alike. However, some form of life might exist nearby on Europa, one of Jupiter's giant moons. Its icy surface is believed to cover an ocean with more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. Europa will be the target of robot orbiters and landers between 2020 and 2030. Looking like a giant propeller, Juno uses new high-tech solar panels to generate electrical power. By the time sunlight reaches Jupiter, it is 25 times weaker than on Earth. Launched in 2011, Juno will enter orbit around Jupiter in 2016. It is expected to revolutionize our understanding of the atmosphere, environment, and origin of this giant planet. At twice the distance of Jupiter, Saturn second largest of the gas giants, presents its own challenges for explorers. Since 2004, Saturn has been orbited by one of the largest and most sophisticated robot explorers ever made. The size of a minibus, the Cassini spacecraft has been studying the giant planet and its 60 plus moons. Cassini's instruments have revealed Saturn's spectacular ring system to be amazingly complex and constantly changing. If they were around Earth, the rings would stretch almost a third of the way to the moon, yet they are only 10 meters thick. These trillions of tiny ice particles are constantly being sculpted into different positions by the effects of moons both large and small. One moon, Enceladus, is believed to be filling a ring with icy material ejected from water geysers on its surface. Enceladus and the giant moon Titan are the two most fascinating in Saturn's grid. In 1980, Voyager 1 sacrificed its chance to visit the more distant planets to close in on Titan, a moon bigger than the planet Mercury. Voyager's cameras found Titan's surface hidden by a dense atmosphere. But other instruments revealed that this atmosphere was largely nitrogen topped by dense hydrocarbon smog. This means Titan was like the Earth of four billion years ago but frozen in interplanetary deep freeze, a prime target for Cassini. Not only could Cassini see through Titan's clouds with infrared and radar, but it carried a lander. In December 2005, the European Space Agency's Huygens craft spent over two hours drifting to the surface of Titan. 
transmitted back to the Cassini mothership, its pictures were startling Earth-like views. Rivers, mountains, coastlines. However, these are rivers of methane, and mountains not of rock, but of rock-hard ice. Huygens soft-landed and sent back a panorama of its surroundings. This is a recreation of exactly what it saw. A floodplain covered in pebbles, rounded by a rushing torrent of methane hundreds of degrees below the freezing point of water. Yet this world could be a time capsule to transport us back to the birth of our planet and the first stirrings of life itself. Another time capsule could be discovered when in July 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft encounters Pluto and Charon. After almost 10 years and over 5 billion kilometers traveled, this intrepid robot will have explored remote Pluto and its known moons. Demoted of its planetary status, this is one of the largest known of the icy worlds that haunt the outer reaches of our system. What is it? An escaped moon of an outer planet? A giant comet? A dead, ice-encrusted globe? Or perhaps the home of tenuous icy geysers? Beyond it lie perhaps billions of tiny frozen remnants of the early solar system that litter halfway to the nearest star. The nearer stars are the target of a different robot which has been seeking planets orbiting other stars. By carefully studying how the light from stars change over time, it's possible to detect the presence and orbital movement of distant yet unseen worlds. It's only one of many ways in which thousands of possible planets have been discovered orbiting other stars in our region of space. Some are single planet systems, many are multi-planet, but planets there are in fantastic variety and number. As our advanced robots scout the heavens for signs of alien life, it's perhaps worth wondering if their robot explorers have yet spotted our little world. And threading its way through the darkness of space, could there be, already on its way, a robotic ambassador from a distant civilization located far in the dark depths of interstellar space?